Okay, everybody, so we're on the road with commentator Jack Nichols. I say hi, there he is. Hello. There may be swearing. There may be swearing. I don't know if this is legal. Uh, legal. I'm holding the phone, so I think we're okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Jack, what are your initial impressions of Tempelhof and the circuit? Uh, it's really cool, actually. Um, it's an odd one because uh, you, on paper you don't know what it's going to be like. You know, a really old aircraft uh, airport built in like the 20s that sort of got a bit done up in the 70s with a racetrack on the sort of apron. You think, oh, this, you know, let's be honest, this could be a bit... Uh, but actually, it, uh, I think it's really cool. I think the track's going to be great. The track's going to provide some really good overtaking. It's so wide in places into nice little tight hairpins. So... Uh, it's really impressive and the building itself is actually really cool you know with the history behind it and everything and you can feel the history without wanting to sound too lame about it you do sort of, you are there sort of going like you know th this is where the Berlin airlift happened you know that's quite a cool thing in in what is a cool city from from that point of view really. and from obviously Lucas de Grassi goes into this race leading the championship just what are your expectations for the weekend and whether he can hold on to You're that You're going to lead? say impressions again, won't you? You're <laughs> going to say impressions again. Uh, I think now, Monaco was the first time for me that uh, it felt like we were doing a, a, a championship race. And, uh, but, you know, the first we had our six winners, six races, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it felt just like it was like a free-for-all, you know what I mean? It was like a free-for-all. Whereas uh, Monaco was the first time where it was actually we've got PK, Prost and Buemi, who are our three championship protagonists, and you've got Dark Horses in Sam Bird and Nico Prost, and, 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 and that was the first time we'd really had that. Before, it would be someone wins a race, they go up to second in the championship. Next weekend, someone else wins a race, so they go second in the championship. Lucas has always been lurking there, up at the top. There's only been one race where we haven't had Degrassi or PK on the podium. I think that was in uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, so yeah, so so uh, I mean I'm not going to call it, but I think Buemi, PK, and Degrassi are the are the main three now. And if this is the championship where the last race was the first time we'd seen a repeat winner, what do you think that says about the quality of the racing or even the the setup of the races? Uh, I think I think it says more for Monaco to be honest, because it was so tight that Degrassi couldn't find a way past and he was there or thereabouts and challenging him and you have to say that if that had been, you know, Argentina or even here, well especially here, if you want, if you, if you, I mean I'm not, it's not going to be easy to overtake but if you have a speed advantage you are going to be able to pass it and I think that's something that even on our sort of revised Monaco layout with the speed of the cars and blah blah blah, blah everything's different it was still very difficult to get past because it was so narrow. Mm -hmm. And have you got a highlight of the season so far, Jack? Even for you as a commentator? Uh, uh, as a commentator, there's, there's nothing. Nothing's different as a commentator. You know what I mean? Like the best moments are still the best moments. You know, it's not like oh, I really love the boring bits because then I get to you know play noughts and crosses with Dario or something. Um, so I think the highlight. I mean, for me, the highlight was, was was still probably Beijing, because okay, I've got two highlights. The first was the first was Beijing because it was like, oh, okay, this has worked, you know, like because it wasn't well, no, it wasn't working, but you didn't know if it was going to work, and then it did work, and it was like, oh wow, okay, this is a you know a sort of big moment. Um, and the second was Miami because all the other. You know, street circuits were after you. Bitterschön! Conscientious commentator. Bitterschön! <laughs> uh, not that you said Dankeschön. Anyway. It's implied. Um, yes, 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 Miami. Because the other street races had taken place in, you know, other parts of town. So Beijing was sort of the Olympic Park, and, um, uh, you know, Buenos Aires was in the new Puerto Madero district. It wasn't like a round, uh, you know. Evita's house but um, Miami was proper downtown Miami and we just shut it and went racing and that was like really cool <laughs> like even here you know we're on an apron and it's all still cool to be racing in the cities 
but Miami was like that was like proper in the city that was like mega and now that manufacturers are coming into Formula E it's going to be much more open there will potentially be a lot more competitive racing what are, you, what are your expectations from for next year and having spoken to some of the teams I'm sure you have what are what are they experiencing at the moment as they go into testing um I don't know if the manufacturers will make it more intense competition because it's pretty... Uh, how do I turn this down now? I'm getting cold. Okay. Are you alright? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't think it'll get more intense, necessarily, because uh, it's pretty intense at the moment. And, and it's maybe a bit more intense because everyone's got the same uh, gubbins underneath them. Um, but it's certainly going to bring an interesting element. And, you know, uh, the odd thing's going to be the development you know developmentally how much can you progress during the season I think that's going to be an interesting thing because you know they could turn up in season one and let's say you know uh, Andretti have built a mega motor but you know maybe apt have the resources to to you know improve it more as the season goes on and, and all that sort of uh, shenanigans so it's going to add in a, a new dynamic and um it's going to be interesting. It's just going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know. there's talk that can the motor make that much of a difference? That's that's the sort of question because the the McLaren motor that uh, we use at the moment is pretty sort of top of the line. And so, is there much time to be found in the motor? Because general consensus seems to be that when the battery regulations open up, that's where there's a lot of time uh, and speed uh, to be gained. Whereas you know the motor can only deal with. The, the sort of power it's given, if that if that makes sense. Not that I particularly. Uh, oh, I can save eight minutes and go via Lindenstraße. Yes, sir. Um, Economical. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you as well as a, when you're watching Formula E, generally the pit stop at the moment is when the biggest shuffle happens. How, as a commentator, do you find the pit stop in its current format? Uh, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. I think the shuffles are, the shuffles are getting less as 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 the teams are starting to to get on top of it a little bit more. It's getting less. You're getting less shufflage. Um, shufflage. And. Uh, <laughs> German traffic report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I think they're saying wherever currently you're staying, that's where the bloody traffic is. <laughs> but, um, uh, this, welcome to half past five rush hour at, uh, in Berlin. It's okay, well we'll leave you to commentate or um, to concentrate. But anyway, uh, so sorry, what was the question? Uh, pit stops. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not too bad because you have the timing screens, you see their minimum pit stop times and it takes a sort of while, it takes a lap or two for everything to sort of shuffle out. But it's the same in any, in any, in any series really, probably except for Formula One because the pit stops are so quick and they tend to not all happen at the same time. But in most other series, you know, I do blanc pan sprint series and that sort of thing, and the pit stops all happen at the, uh, you know, at the same time. So you so you get used to sort of shuffling it out and, uh, and figuring out, you know, what, what, what's happened in the, in the melee. Fantastic, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, commentator Jack Nichols. No problem, that's my full name. <laughs>